Hi everyone. Today this narrated PowerPoint is going to talk to you all about writing an evaluation essay. So first, why do we write reviews? Essentially, it's to convince a person to spend either their time or their money on a product or not. And at the base of it, at the core of a review, it's essentially a judgment, but that judgment has to be based on a specific criteria, which we're going to talk about here in a moment. So let's discuss the guidelines for this particular class. I'm asking you to choose a piece of media. So it can be a film, a television show, a music album, a video game, a book, a website, an app, or a podcast. Um, I'm pretty sure I've covered all of the different types of media there. Um, the only restriction is that it needs to have been released within the last six months. The reason that I do this is because people typically write reviews when something is new. Uh, you know, you don't write a review of a movie that came out 20 years ago. Uh, for TV shows and podcasts, the episodes must either be currently airing or the last episode needs to have aired within the last six months. I know that television shows particularly don't follow that traditional uh, spring and fall uh, timeline anymore. You know, we have summer shows, we have winter shows, we have mini series. Um, so as long as the last episode uh, was in the last six months or if it's currently on air. Uh, you're also going to want to focus on a single episode if you are doing a podcast or a TV show, trying to tackle more than one episode is going to be too much uh, for your review. So let's talk about the key features that your textbook gives for writing a review. The first part is a brief summary. And for this particular paper, you don't want a summary to dominate your essay. It should only be enough that readers or viewers who are not familiar with your subject will understand what it is, uh, but the goal is to evaluate, not to summarize. So you don't want to give too much away, and you certainly don't want to give any spoilers away. Uh, the next piece is clearly defined criteria. Okay, so what are, we what are we talking about when we say criteria? Well, think about a film. What elements are there in a film? There's actors, there's plot, there's dialogue, there's scenery, there's perhaps music. So what you need to come up with once you choose what it is that you're going to review, is a list of criteria that make up perhaps what makes a good mystery TV series or what makes a good R&B album. And once you come up with that list of criteria, once you start to read or interact with or listen to your piece of media, you're going to take notes based on that criteria that you've come up with. Your textbook also talks about having a knowledgeable discussion of your topic. In order to do this, you need to know what other people have said about uh, your piece of media. So part of this project is going to be going out and finding two other reviews on the same topic. We'll talk more about this next week, about finding reliable internet sources uh, and finding appropriate reviews. Just keep in mind that if the piece of media that you initially choose is obscure uh, and you can't find other reviews on the topic, then you need to have a backup uh, just in case. Next is a balanced and fair assessment. Now, we said a couple of minutes ago that a review is a judgment. So I don't want you to be afraid to have an opinion. You should have an opinion. But you need to acknowledge the fact that even if you think a television show is excellent and here are all the reasons, there's still the potential that some elements could have been done better. Uh, same thing vice versa with something that you think was terrible. Uh, that there may be a couple of redeeming elements, but perhaps those redeeming elements don't overcome the bad elements. And the last part is your well-supported reasons. And this is what is going to make up the majority of your essay. And this is where you're going to need to pull specific examples from your piece of media in order to support your points. So, for example, if you are reviewing a film, 
you may choose to talk about the dialogue and you would need to quote specifically the dialogue from the movie in your paper. Or perhaps you're describing, uh, you're talking about how the scenery added to the film and you need to describe in detail what that scenery looked like in order to support your points. I want to take a minute and kind of not necessarily shift gears, but the evaluation is the genre that we're working in, just like our first project was a literacy narrative. But the technique that you're using is making an argument, and you're going to be making an argument in all of your essays for the rest of this class. So that's why I want to touch on uh, this technique here. And the first part of an argument is a claim. And your claim is a statement that reasonable people can agree or disagree with. And in this particular essay, your claim is your judgment about your piece of media. So it needs to be something that another person could potentially disagree or agree with. There are a couple of things in general that cannot be claims. The first one is a fact, all right? We can't argue. Uh, against the fact that the Spanish word for blue is azure. That's, it just is. We can't argue against that. The second one is issues of faith or belief. And you'll see later on in the semester uh, when we get to our research paper, there are certain issues that I'm going to say are um, off limits that you can't write your paper about. So things like the death penalty, abortion, uh, things that are often driven by faith or certain beliefs. And we'll talk more about that uh, later on in the semester, um, but just know that, you know, those issues have their places in other classes, philosophy classes, um, logic classes, things like that, but um, we're not going to be tackling them in this class. And then the last one is personal taste. Uh, for example, you can tell me until you're blue in the face that you think beets are fantastic. I think they're disgusting. I think they taste like dirt. And no matter how healthy they are for you, uh, you'll never get me to eat them. Uh, but that is a matter of personal taste. I can't go on to ever have a reasonable agreement or disagreement with somebody based on that. There are two other parts to creating an argument. One is a qualification. And this is acknowledging that your claim may not always be true, that there may be different situations, people, scenarios, events that will change whether or not your claim is true. Now, this won't happen uh, quite so often in a review, but when we get to our research papers that uh, you choose your topic for, there may be a qualification that you have to give. And then the last piece is reasons and evidence which is essentially support for your claim, and we talked about that uh, in the last slide. The structure of your essay is fairly straightforward. So in your introduction paragraph, you're going to want to give a brief summary, but again, make sure that it's not too much, uh, that it doesn't give anything away. You just want to draw your reader in. And then your thesis, again, needs to be that judgment call about your piece of media. You know, is it good, bad, or mediocre. In your body paragraphs, each paragraph should discuss a single criteria. So for example, uh, again using the example of the film, you may discuss the plot in one paragraph and how the plot contributes to the success of the film. You may end up writing two paragraphs about that if you have a lot to say, but what I don't want you to do is to try and discuss more than one criteria in a single paragraph. Um, if you're doing that, you're probably not spending enough time on each one to really uh, illuminate your argument. And overall, you should be discussing at least three to four criteria. So, for example, with the film, you may discuss plot, dialogue, the actors, uh, and the soundtrack, something like that. Finally, your conclusion is your overall recommendation and how it fits among other examples of its genre. So there are three sample reviews up on Blackboard. I really recommend that you take a look at all three of them. And if you read their conclusion paragraphs carefully, you'll see that what I'm talking about when I say, how does it fit among other examples of its genre? For example, 
uh, there is a review of the TV show called Runaways. And Runaways is a TV drama, or sorry, t teen drama. Um, and it is also um, a Marvel series. So it has superheroes uh, and mutants in it. So what they address at the end of that is it is a successful teen drama and it works within the, that genre, but it also works within the superhero genre. So again, I really recommend that you read all three of those as they are solid examples of reviews. So for next week, we're going to discuss finding reliable outside sources. And like I said, you're going to need to find two other reviews on the same subject. For now, I just want you to focus on choosing what it is that you're going to review and then starting to come up with those criteria that you're going to base your review on.